Hey guys, uh, DM Scotty here. Uh, welcome to DM's Craft. Um, have an interesting video today. Um, I wanted to talk about um, doing puzzles. Um, some DMs are like, no way, no puzzles, no how. Uh, others, other groups love puzzles. Um, some groups uh, can take them or leave them. So it's kind of a DM thing as far as deciding um, to do puzzles or not. Um, but they can be fun. Uh, my group is kind of 50-50. Uh, some like it and some don't. So um, as long as the puzzle's not too long or too crazy, um, then those players don't seem to get too bored. But um, I want to show how you could craft a puzzle. So this is kind of a two-part video. I've got um, the room tile that I'm doing um, to make the puzzle, and I show some of the components, or I'll show the components of the puzzle. And then I put it all together and show you how I ran the puzzle, um, including with some um, handouts for the players, uh, a riddle, and a dial gauge uh, that was on an object in the room um, that had different settings. So I handed those out to the players, as well as having the tile um, with all the, uh, the pieces on it. So uh, I hope you find this useful as far as uh, making or crafting your own puzzles. And uh, let's go to the table. Hey guys, so the start of my trap room is this uh, cave cavern tile. And you can see it looks like a standard cavern tile. Um, but I've cut a circle in the center, and that's going to be a reflecting pool for the trap, uh, or for the puzzle room. So now, um, I want to make this kind of look like a cosmos. So I'm going to use a black, but this is a metallic black. So it'll give it a little bit of a sheen, uh, which would be really nice. So I'll just squirt that on there. And I'm going to put it on fairly thin, so I'm going to use my brush and uh, just get it on there start. So there you can see it's uh, totally black and uh, I'm going to let that uh, dry and uh, now I'm going to work on the reflecting pool. So now what I'm going to do for the reflecting pool is I'm going to use a piece of cardstock and uh, thin cardstock. I'll just pop it into my tile here and draw the circle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, texture with my glue gun. Not too much. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. Just give a little interest. Okay, so I've got as much as I want. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this white, um, and then I'll uh, put it in our uh, our tile. So what I'll do first is though I'm going to cut it because I don't need all this extra edge. But I'm not going to cut it to the circle because I need the extra overhang. To, uh, stick it to the tile. So there we go. I'll go paint that white and uh, then we'll come back and finish this up. So, guys, here's my uh, reflecting pool uh, cardstock. Uh, I just painted it white. And you want to do that when you do things like this because um, you want it to be lighter and not dark. So I was going for the light effect. So now I'm going to use a uh, metallic um, blue topaz, and that'll give it, a, give it the pool a nice sheen. So I'll just get some on the brush and just start. I'm going to wet it down quite a bit. So see how I got, that gives a nice shade to the to the pool. Alright, now I'm going to let this dry. Um, if you find that something like this starts to bend up, uh, don't worry too much because you're going to glue it to the bottom of the uh, tile. 
so that's not a big deal. But uh, so we'll let this dry and then we'll uh, glue it to the uh, tile. Okay, I wanted to show you these little pedestals I made. Uh, this is a flagstone that uh, was made from a Hearst Arts mold. Uh, and I've done three different um, flagstones with a, a pedestal on each. Uh, the flagstones are just cast. Um, you can buy these molds online at, um, at the site. And, um, but you wouldn't have to use these. I, I just use it for my project, but you could use uh, even a piece of cardboard. Now these, the, the pedestal pieces, um, are interesting because basically what these are are beads. So I just glued beads to these flagstones and it's, that is a great resource for you to use for things like this. Like I just have a jar of uh, cheap plastic beads that I've collected and uh, I'll just dump them out here. And so you can see I've got all these different shapes and designs and you know some are weird colors but that doesn't matter. Once you paint them you won't be able to tell the difference from you know what it is now to what it will be. So I've got all these interesting shapes and I chose some and used them for these pedestals. So you can get these uh, very cheap at um, craft stores. So just get a jar of them, save those and use them for your projects. Now here's the four uh, pieces I was going to use for the uh, for the puzzle. Um, I have basically I have a flagstone, uh, which is the bottom piece, a pillar, and then I have a globe at the top. Um, and I described the globe in the game as a quartz uh, globe, um, and I just used um, like a uh, plastic bead. So basically, just like um, the pieces I used for the pedestals, I have a um, a bin full of just cheap these so I can use these for different projects I've got some like crystal and other things so um, you can get these for really cheap at um, just about any craft store so I'll give you a closer look here so I just uh, um, had the block for the bottom uh, part of the uh, of the object and then I use some uh, beads for the center um, pole and then I used, just used a, um, a bead, a circular bead, a uh, pearlescent bead for the top. So I've got two that are smaller of the same size and I've got one that's larger. So these kind of simulate uh, in the puzzle how it works. So, And then I have one with nothing on it and uh, which is still very important and I'll uh, show you how that works in the puzzle so here we go I've got our uh, tile and uh, now I'm going to add the, uh, uh, the reflecting pool to it so I'll just turn that over and uh, some uh, hot glue around the edge there. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn it over and do it so I can see. And there we go. So now we've got our um, reflecting pool uh, in the tile and now we'll move on to the next stage uh, here's my completed tile um, now I put a, a center um, island in the center of the reflecting pool and I'm going to have an object sitting on that um, I've got uh, the outer area. Now one thing I did at the outer area was um, after I painted it with the metallic -y black I actually just smeared a thin coat of Elmer's glue on this and then sprinkled some um, sparkles 
or sprinkled some uh, glitter. Uh, you can, I hope you can see that. Kind of see that on there. So that, um, since I was going for like a cosmological um, look um, of like the sun and the reflecting pool kind of represents the earth, um, I wanted to kind of reinforce the idea with the actual background of the tile. So um, you want to think about that when you're when you're setting up this kind of thing. Um, not only does it um, add to the mood, um, your color choices add to the mood of what you're doing. Um, they also um, can give clues, uh, like stars um, in this uh, in the basalt rock that's surrounding the uh, reflecting pool. So uh, I'll uh, move to the next part now. Uh, now this item was from a set, um, from a Mage Knight set, and it's just like a trap clock. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting to use um, in the center island of uh, the reflecting pool. And um, like most Mage Knight uh, miniatures, it was horribly painted. I just uh, helped fix that by giving it a nice black wash and that kind of filled in the crack areas and crevices. Didn't make it look uh, so horrible. So. Um, I use that for the uh, center in the island, and the dial um, that I had, the dial is actually on this object. So now I'm going to set up the tile and show you um, what it all looks like and how it plays out. Here's my tile all set up. Um, I've got the clock-like mechanism in the center, and then, um, just this way. And I have the four pedestals um, and three with the globes on them. I also added a few, a few dead bodies to this room to add some dread to it. So basically when the characters come up to the room, they talk to the stone face that I had on the door, which I showed in a previous video. And the stone face tells them um, that there is a puzzle in the room with great treasure. Um, and that they could, um, if they wish to enter, they can. Um, and they asked a few questions, and it knew questions related to uh, the p certain questions related to the puzzle itself, like um, could I get out anytime? And yes, the answer was yes. They could leave before the puzzle's duration. Um, now that the the stone head also talked to them about um, that they would have. Um, half a day to figure out the puzzle. But then it told them before they went in that hours would seem like minutes. So they actually had 12 minutes to solve the puzzle. So when they come in, um, as soon as they see the riddle, the Pelor riddle, uh, which has which is a clue to the puzzle solution, then um, they, I would I actually start the timer on my phone. So I started a, a, a literal um, real timer um, for them to finish the puzzle. They had 12 minutes, but not quite 12 minutes. And I'll explain that in a sec. Here's the riddle that uh, the players find to help them solve the puzzle. And uh, it's Pelor's face shines in his Tisha's bosom with sunlit features until he goes to rest and awakes to admire himself for another day. Um, so this, this uh, riddle has clues to help solve the puzzle. Um, it's also making fun of Pelor, um, how vain he is, uh, as a dwarven joke, uh, because their god is Mordain, so, um, they're making fun of, of Pelor, so kind of an inside joke there. But the, uh, the riddle here has clues for them to, to help them, uh, solve the puzzle. So they come in, they're, they're looking around, and, uh, they read the riddle, and it starts, I start the timer. Um, and they're looking at the globes and at the, they finally look at the clock and everything and they see the dial. Um, so, but they also notice as a few minutes start to tick by that the doors are sliding down on each side of this room. So basically at 12 minutes, the door will shut, will totally shut. So they have, um, they don't have the whole 12 minutes. If, um, if they try to get out a couple minutes um, 
till 12, then they could, they could just go right out the door. If they wait um, to like a minute till, they have to make an acrobatic check or they're basically entombed forever. So um, if they wanted to try to push it, thought they were almost the solution, they could. Now another thing that I, I told them when they came in this room was it was pitch black when they came in. There was no light source. Um, and that's kind of a clue uh, also. Now another thing I did was um, they could make intelligence checks to get clues. And um, that, would, that, that helped them a little bit. So that way you can kind of reward characters with high intelligence without giving them the answer. That's always kind of been a problem with D&D that people say, oh, my character could do that. He's really smart. Um, well, yeah, but so you can compensate for that for by giving them clues if they make intelligence checks. So, and then you can make the check harder as they want more clues. So you might have a couple clues on hand ready and then um, that you feel appropriate and as a DM. And then uh, when they make the first check, you know, make it make it a medium maybe and then maybe maybe a hard you know and then you know then they have to figure it out from there so um so when they get in uh the timer starts you see how we had the dial on the clock and the clock has this uh dial on it and you can see the dial in the center there and it can it can move to the different settings uh they have this setting this one this one and this one so uh, that will become part of the riddle or the uh, solution and they'll have to figure out what settings to um, put the dial on at particular points when solving the when solving the puzzle. So the solution to the puzzle is um, that the players have to dial each globe and um, each globe represents the sun and this represents the night, just the just the um, the flagstone. So when they dial to the first globe, they have to get behind the globe with a light source to shine, like um, like a sun. And then what I would do is I would have the, the mechanism click when they got that correct to give them an idea that it was correct. Like the first time they tried it, they just dialed it to it. They didn't try to light it, and um, it nothing happened. But when they when they correctly lit it it actually clicked and so forth and so on. And then when they got to the last one they 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 dialed it, but of course it's it, they realized it's night so they didn't put any light source, but they left their light sources on in the room so it it wouldn't click. So um, from the clue I told them that it had to do with uh, light and dark uh, that they figured out. And uh, they realized that um, they needed to extinguish all their light sources so they did and then it clicked. And then the um, then both doors slid open, and they were slowly sliding down. They slid open, and uh, the center island opened up. Um, the top slid over, and um, there's a there was a basically a big horde of treasure uh, from the dwarven thanes in inside that um, area. So they didn't try to carry it at that point. They knew they could come back and get it. So they basically, but there were some uh, um, items specific to the dungeon. Or specific um, to the to the dwarven thanes that they could use on their adventure against giants, so they use that stuff. So that was a good way to give them um, kind of specific items and a fun way. Um, and also they got a little reward um, because they could go out this way. And this way was uh, I showed you my cavern and tile with the uh, grotto. And they, if they came out this way, they could go down the cable car. So it would have been virtually impossible to get on the cable car if they didn't if they hadn't gotten through there so they could have left either way um, and I'm guessing they would have left through the entrance so they they figured they wouldn't be stuck but um, so that was kind of an extra reward and so uh, I knew my characters would leave before they got closed in so but it just kind of gave some pressure um, on them to actually have a time limit um, to finish the puzzle so and if they didn't finish it I mean, they didn't get the treasure, but it wasn't a horrible, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't have, it didn't derail the adventure. Uh, a lot of people have talked about, you know, puzzles and, and um, riddles, you know, can, can, you know, if you make it at a place where it's a junction, you know, and they don't get through, then they can't go further, which is, you know, you don't want that. You want them to have another option, at least one other option. 
Um, I did have another puzzle later in the dungeon that I'll show, and um, they literally had to get through the puzzle. But if they and if they didn't, there was another way to go. It was a more it was a dangerous way, but you know they still had another way to go. They weren't stuck uh, at that point. So um, you always want to have um, alternate ways. You don't want a puzzle to be uh, you know a roadblock that you have to get through and you can't go on if you don't if you don't finish the puzzle. But puzzles are fun. Um, some of my characters like the puzzles, others others don't. Um, so I have some really good puzzle solvers and some that just kind of blank out. But, you know, the puzzle, the, this puzzle took like, you know, I had a timer, so it took, you know, less than, I think that they solved it in like six minutes. So, you know, the other players weren't waiting that long um, to, you know, for the puzzle to end. So... You know, you when you think about that with your players, you know, you you know, you don't want to have it go on and on and on for players that aren't interested in puzzles. So, but for those that are, you know, which my group is kind of half and half, um, I like to throw those in every now and then. So, I thought this was a fun puzzle, and I wanted to show you. I thought I could give you an idea um, of how to uh, run a puzzle and set it up, um, physically set it up. Um, this really didn't take a lot of work to do. Um, I think it really helps visualize, you know, what the players need to do um, to solve the puzzle. And um, there you go, and I'll see you next time on DM's Craft.